Hi, I'm Nuru Karim. I'm a practicing architect based in Mumbai. And some of my favorite hobbies, uh, besides spending time with my four-year-old, are reading, 3D printing, and designing. I recently did state that I would love to 3D print before my last dying breath. In the next 15 minutes, I'm going to turn the clock back on a failing multi-million dollar construction industry and how that failing multi-million dollar construction industry could learn from social insect engineering. To do that, I would have to transport you into space, get a macro perspective, and then zoom right back in to get a more micro scenario. These are some of the fascinating structures that you can see from space with the naked eye. Some of them are the Great Wall of China, the Greenhouses of Almeria, and the Great Pyramids of Giza. But some of the most fascinating structures that you can see from space are the great termite mounds located in the northeast of Brazil. These termite mounds age back 4,000 years ago to the age and time of the Great Pyramids of Giza. And while human beings were engineering these fantastic structures, termites were engineering these incredible, sustainable, bioengineered structures. Not thousands, but millions of these mounds are interspersed 60 feet apart to cover a geographic area as vast as Britain. The termites have excavated close to 10 cubic kilometers of material volume, which is equivalent to the material volume of 400 pyramids of Giza. These termite mounds are made of very simple material, local material, pun intended. They're made of a mixture of soil, dung, and saliva. It takes about four or five years to construct these termite mounds. And during that period, they are subjected to natural calamities, such as even a torrential downpour, which really means that these termite mounds are constantly evolving. They're in a constant state of repair and rebuild mode, and they are, in a, they are, they are evolving cities. These termite mounds are also temperature-controlled systems. They're very efficient heating and cooling systems. The termites have the brain the size of a grain of sand. And by themselves, they really don't exhibit tremendous intellectual pay degree. But as a collective swarm, these termites exhibit incredible intellectual pay degree. They are again driven by the following principles. One is convention, and the other is stigmergy. Social convention is about agents trusting other agents to follow the same set of rules, which really means that every termite trusts the other termite to follow exactly the same set of rules. No termite breaches that trust. Stigmergy is about dropping information into the environment. Material information is dropped and also trails of chemical pheromones, which trigger local actions. So what really can we learn from these incredible, sustainable, ecological, bioengineered structures? What can we learn when it comes to the future of construction, where our buildings are concerned, our cities are concerned, our infrastructure is concerned, and our built environment is concerned. In contrast to these bioengineered structures, our cities are constructed very differently. Our cities are constructed with a host of consultants on board. You have architects, you have planners, you have urban designers, you have landscape consultants, you have land acquisition experts, you have legal advisors, you have financial institutions, you have financial analysts. You also have Im environmental impact analysts. When construction rolls out, construction is seen under the skilled supervision of a set of project managers, supervisors, and foremen on site. The construction industry is a multi-billion dollar industry 
And in spite of these resources, it has invested extremely little in research, development, and innovation. Even simple elements like automation is missing in the industry. However, with the advent of robotic technologies, automation, and other interesting aspects might roll into the future where construction is concerned. We have all been frustrated by construction at some point or the other. We've been held ransom due to traffic snarls related to construction activity. There are also issues such as pollution, endless delays. There are two seasons in Mumbai. One is the monsoons, and the other is construction. You want another construction joke? Well, I'm still working at it. <laughs> Jokes aside, this construction industry is also faced with some very grave issues. There are issues such as gender inequity. There are issues where there, are, there is unskilled labor. There also exist labor exploitation. Health and well-being of laborers in the workforce is another issue. The image on the right is an image of two ladies carrying a heavy load of bricks on their head. This is dated 2016 in a metropolis in India. And photographed on the eve of Women's International Day. The women on the left of the image is a file shot from the 1970s. And how little has changed over the last five decades. It is a common sight to see women multitask on a construction site. They're often looking after children while also attending to construction activities. It is also a very common sight to see children play on a construction site. The construction site becomes their playground. There also exists division of labor where construction activity is concerned between men and women. Men are awarded the far more manual task, such as fabrication, so on and so forth, in the absence of machinery and automation. Women are assigned tasks to shift material on site from point A to point B, and very often on their heads and on their backs. This is not only embarrassing, it's inhuman. So what can we actually learn from social insect engineering? What can we learn from swarm intelligence? What can we learn from collective intelligence? And how could these bottom-up design processes enter the main foray where construction activities are concerned? Termites belong to the class of social insects like ants. And they're defined by the following characteristics. There's social integration and group integration. There's division of labor. There was overlapping generations, and there's equity. And it is because of these characteristics they have been able to create such fascinating, sustainable ecosystems. The advent of robotic technologies, including computing and allied technologies, are built on the cornerstone of swarm intelligence. Swarming robots could potentially build large structures in a quick span of time. Some of these structures could be built without a single coordinated sketch. Swarming robotic technologies armed with cutting edge 3D and 4D printing and drone robotics could potentially explore a vast area of materials, such as clay, brick, sand, earth, mud, even concrete and metal, for that matter. Swarming robotic technologies have also applications in many different industries. They could be deployed as initial first responders in the aftermath of an earthquake, a tsunami, or even a flood situation. 
The construction industry is arguably the largest emitter of carbon dioxide emissions. Climate change is real, and it has been confirmed that human beings are responsible for climate change 99.999%. Climate change also poses a threat to species extinction. Plant and animal species are driven to extinction because local environmental conditions are incompatible with their tolerance levels. Elon Musk, founder and CEO of SpaceX, has stated that humans must be a multi-planetary species in order to survive. It is now acknowledged that in the next 75 to 100 years, substantial number of human beings would be staying in large, sustainable townships on the Red Planet. Musk wants to make human space-age travel possible in the near future, by 2024, in the next five years. NASA recently launched a 3D printing habitation competition on Mars, on the Red Planet. And it wanted to challenge designers, architects, and engineers to look about transporting materials and also take into effect the differences in atmospheric and landscape parameters. They also wanted to challenge designers to think about engineering using 3D printing technologies. The brief was very simple. Construct a habitation about 1,000 square feet to house four astronauts and also have space to store material and other equipment. The winning entry was an entry from a firm called Zoffice from Arkansas. And they designed a spider-like lander. The entire 3D printed apparatus was grafted into the body of this lander. The spider-like lander would scout the surface and look for an optimum print area. The spider-like lander would also be assisted by a host of robots who would scurry around the Martian landscape to find locally available material like ice, calcium oxide, and Martian aggregate. The spider-like lander would cling itself onto the surface, create a pressurized container, a pressurized environment to enable the 3D printing process. It would then lift its legs to reveal the 3D printed object and then move on to print the next set of clusters. NASA is also exploring and investing in a swarm of robotic bees called Mars bees. These swarming robotic bees would be flying around the Martian airspace, gathering information, data, to be used for research and further investigation. Scientists believe that these swarming robotic bees would be far more effective than investing in a single rover. And while we look up into the skies, and we look at the stars and the universe and all the planets, the ground reality is very different. This is a 15-month-old girl child tied to her ankle with a barrier tape to prevent her from running away while her mother is working on a construction site. How could technology harness the power and sophistication of nature to break the chains that imprison humanity? How could low-level actions of independent agents result in high-level emergent outcomes of the collective? I leave you with two images. One is the face of humanity the human dimension and the social dimension. And the other is the face 
of cutting edge technology, the technology of the future, technology where swarming robotics are concerned. And hopefully, the twain shall meet. Thank you very much.